in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed knowledge that you need the first being the knowledge of God the second level of knowledge you must have in order to be able to shine forth is that you must know yourself knowing God is powerful as far as your fellowship as far as your rising as far as your communion and your spiritual orientation is concerned but in addition to knowing God you must know yourself oh you must know yourself Psalm 49 and verse 20 write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life Psalm 49 and verse 20 you must know yourself Psalm 49 and verse 20 here's what the Bible says man that is in honor and understand it not is like the beast that perisheth it's important to know God because in the revelation of God is the revelation of yourself you may know yourself in terms of your background you may know yourself in terms of your tribe you may know yourself in terms of your earthly family but it is important that you understand your spiritual identity and I want to show you from the Word of God two things that the Bible says about you number one John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 please give it to us quickly John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 you must know who you are there was a man sent from God whose name was Joshua Selman there was a man look at the origin someone prophesied say sent from God say it about yourself sent from God I know that you may call yourself a Yoruba person an Igbo person a Hausa person an European uh, you know a, 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 an African all of those things are just the physical geography but the Bible traces your origin he never said there was a man who came from his mother or came from his father the Bible did not even say there was a man who came from God you did not come you were sent that means God is not scratching his head wondering what you will do with your life there was a space allocated for you sent from God sent from God when you arrive the earth they gave you all kinds of names they called you Joseph they called you Abiodu they called you whatever they, you, is your name but let me tell you the truth you must understand that you came from God and the Bible says he that cometh from above is above all listen this is a mentality that changed my life that means there is an advantage I have beyond my background there is an advantage I have beyond the geographic reference you may associate me with we live in a world today where one of the biggest problems of young people is identity crisis the inability to have a scripture based understanding of who you are unfortunately we live in a world today that prides in suggesting all kinds of things if you do not know who you are 
the world has a plethora of templates that they will make you pick anyone from there are people who have become weak because the world told them they were weak there are people who have become mediocre because the world told them that remember when the spies the 12 spies returned back some of them brought an evil report and they said we were in our own eyes like grasshoppers he never said we were in the eyes of satan he never said we were in the eyes of god like grasshopper based on our own perception this is our conclusion that we're like grasshoppers and caleb steal them and said let us go up at over what you know god has made you you see that our generation is bankrupt of conviction we can become anything depending on who is talking no there are many of you god is raising you to be the next apostles and prophets and evangelists but right now you are about to give it give up that noble call because of some ill-informed respectfully speaking arrogant people who are in ignorance who want to downplay your passion and your fire for god some of you will be the next politicians some of you will be the next heads of government and while you are walking in the path of discipline and responsibility that leads to this kind of enviable destiny there are ignorant people who cannot do much in your life but will downplay your passion and commitment i remind you this life that you have is the life of god in you this life that you have is a life of God listen the next time anybody wants to bully you out of your conviction out of your identity you don't need to fight don't waste your time trying to defend yourself the Bible says haven't done all to stand stand you don't have to fight and quarrel and insult people no 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 if someone looks at you and feels you are stupid no problem did they not think Joseph was a fool but later on when he became prime minister there are some of you those who are laughing at you now one day they will open the door of an office to seek for help and guess who will be seated there And the same tongues you were praying while they laughed you will still be praying it in the office the same Bible they laughed at you for holding will still be on your desk there while you are CEO I won't go back can go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Please hear me. By this admonition God is already speaking to someone you have already come too far the world is making you look like you are wrong receive the grace to continue receive the grace to continue many may be making you look like a fool for being a prayerful person receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for being a disciplined young man or disciplined young woman receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for loving the word of god and being a student of scripture receive the grace to continue many may make you look like a fool for turning down supposedly nice opportunities to honor your convictions i assure you at the end of it god will compensate you hear me there are some of you right now 
you are about to lose your identity simply because of friends apostle i'm tired of being alone can i tell you there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother it is better to walk alone and be in the right direction than to walk with a crowd heading nowhere did you hear what i said it is better to walk alone and be headed the direction of destiny than to walk with a crowd that is bankrupt of vision and going nowhere please sit down as we wrap up number one the first level of knowledge you must know God number two you must know yourself you must have a spiritual orientation about who you are now that you are in Christ I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor so I know who I am number three please write what is the third level of knowledge you must have to live an excelling life that shines forth are you ready you must know your place in God's program and in destiny these are the three levels of knowledge you must know your place in God's program you must know your place in destiny so number one you must know God number two you must know yourself in light of the knowledge of God that you now have but number three which is equally important you must know your place in God's program you must know your place there are many many people who know God to an extent there are even few who have had a healthy understanding of who they are but many have not found their place in destiny in Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 here's what the Bible says 16 and 17 very instructive scripture as we prepare to pray the Bible says and as he came he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up the Bible says and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read verse 17 very powerful scripture verse 17 Luke 4 17 the Bible says and there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah and when he had opened the book hallelujah he found the place where it was written when he opened the book he found from the book the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me when you read from verse 18 he found it and when he read it he now closed the book the eyes fastened upon him and he said this scripture is fulfilled that means i have found my place let me tell you the truth it is risky to sojourn this earth in confusion as to your place in life and destiny and in God's program we are celebrating our father in the Lord today and our mother we are celebrating the mighty things that God has done and continues to do across the globe through the RCCG simply because a man found his place it is powerful when you find your place because when you find your place in God's program you have found security when you find your place in God's program you have found the basis of your confidence it is dangerous to assume your place you must find it you can't just assume this is my place uh -uh. let me announce to you by the authority of scripture that there is an allocation for everyone in God's prophetic pro program there is nobody here under the sound of my voice and for those watching by television there is no one upon the earth who does not have a place 
in God's prophetic program but you see let me tell you the truth your place cannot be left vacant forever if you refuse to occupy your place God is able to give your bishopric to another person that is why someone can begin a ministry as an evangelist and later up end up carrying other responsibilities the added responsibility was given to him through faithfulness because of someone else's assignment that he refused to do it's in your bible he said his bishopric let another take oh may no one replace you in destiny may no one replace you in destiny hallelujah do you know why finding your place in destiny is very important because destiny is like a relay how many of you have um, seen those in the track and field running and when there are four people running a relay when one person starts all the other three are at the mercy of that one person is that true they are ready they are willing you even see some of them jogging but if the person to come is slow and is wasting their time he can delay the destiny of all the rest how many people's destinies have been delayed now because you have not found your place imagine if mary did not find her place imagine if joseph did not find his place imagine if jesus did not find his place imagine if abraham did not find his place esther paul who wrote two-thirds of the new testament he said lo i come let's 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 read that that, that chapter hebrews 10 and verse 7 lo i come 10 7 hebrews lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will when i found out that by the privilege of god's grace that i have a place in god's program i have a place in the revival that is happening i have a place in steering my generation to love and know god when i found that place i was happy and this is what i do all my life this is why i live and if it pleases him this is why i would transit to see his face all my days on earth i will await the moment that i see you face to face for nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the cup that will run dry listen hear me you are seated here today and you are getting blessed your being blessed is a result of someone finding his place in life and destiny you must find your place you want to show forth there is an allocation for you there are some of you a few years from now you are the ones who will be standing here and you are going to be preaching to others and you will tell them many years ago i was seated there there are some of you you will travel from nation to nation carrying the gospel and the power of god with signs and wonders betting revivals across territories hear me there are some of you you are the ones who will become the billionaires and be supplying resources for the kingdom activities there are some of you you are the political leaders that will be enacting policies that make the territory safe for the gospel and safe for advancement and safe for development there are some of you you are the educators who will be training the next level of leaders please hear me by all means find your place by all means find your place it is a risk to not find your place listen carefully roaming around and wasting your time in unreasonable activities unreasonable relationships unreasonable distractions is only eating up your destiny i hope you know the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to 
you are giving a part of your life to hallelujah I want you to listen very carefully to this song I'm, I'm about to sing and then we'll pray whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whoever you want to change Lord you can change through me and here's the reason I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Lord Jesus I'm yours forevermore listen whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift through me whatever you want to start Lord you can start through me and whatever you want to end Lord you can end is that someone's prayer I'm your Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore now hear me whoever you want to heal Lord you can heal Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change to me. That is what it means to find your place in destiny. Lord, if there is someone who needs healing, Joshua Selman is available. Lord, if there is someone who needs to know Jesus, Joshua Selman is available. Lord, if there is a nation that needs revival and that the fire of God falls upon it, Joshua Selman is available. Do you need me to give you a prayer request or are you already praying? must find your place in destiny you must find your place in destiny listen please listen to me listen to me I want you to make a covenant with your destiny tonight that visionless living comes to an end make a covenant with your destiny that anything that wastes my time tonight is the night I wrap it up I don't have time for distractions time for waste there are millions depending upon your destiny here's what the Bible says it said seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame someone open your mouth and begin to pray father I obtain grace grace to invest in the knowledge of God grace to invest in knowing myself grace to invest in finding my place in your prophetic program for the nation someone pray a man of God who is rising pray a businessman who is rising pray a student who is rising pray 
a visionary who is right in pray hallelujah now listen very carefully listen I want you to pray and say father the same way you walk with our father and guided him to become what he has become today guide me also guide me by your spirit lift your voice and pray guide me also per step per season guide me also per moment per decision guide me also you guided our fathers lord guide me pray guide my generation pray hallelujah listen very carefully please listen I'm wrapping up now I want you to listen hear me as we celebrate the revival that is hitting this nation the continent of Africa our fathers have prophesied this revival that before Jesus returns there will be a massive awakening an awakening like we have never seen before and we are already seeing this move of the spirit across the nations of Africa and believe me from Africa we are exporting this revival exporting it to the nations of the earth revealing Jesus in a dimension that has not been seen and experienced before but please hear me please hear me before Jesus returns the army that God is going to be using will be separated into three categories I need to say this and then I wrap up number one the first formation of this end time army that will usher in the last move of God before the return of Jesus the first dimension of this army are called prophetic intercessors there are men and women who like honor the prophetess they are people who will master the ministry of priesthood and the mysteries of the altar there cannot be revival and the genuine move of God until there are a people who give themselves continually to prayer not just me giving prayer God give me this tea and bread prayer for nations prayer for territories prophetic intercessors and I know that some of you here that grace and that mantle has been looking for you prophetic intercessors watchmen that are placed upon the wall that will give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem to be a praise people who will pray down fire upon nations pray down fire upon generations number two the second category of people are those that the Bible will call the sent ones these are the ones who will be sent everywhere across what you know to be the seven mountains pastors business people politicians educators family people career people they may be serving across the territory but they are people of conviction who love the Lord number three the third category of people that form this end time army are called the kingdom financiers they are the ones anointed by God with grace in the marketplace to make sure that the program of God is not delayed because of financial limitations these are people who will be trusted with wealth it will not just be wealth from business God himself will make them his treasurers and they will fund his program across nations hear me everyone listening to me right now by television or in this place you can be one or two or all of these categories 
that is what gives you the basis to shine forth the bible says that they may show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light my time is up but i want to do two things two things now very quickly number one i'm going to pray for you and something will come upon you this night in the name of jesus the son of the living god but before i pray for you please hear me some of you are crying i know that there are people here who are saying apostle honestly i came for this conference but sincerely i've not made my my life right with jesus i cannot say for sure that i am saved for others you may be saying well i have come out for several altar calls but i just came out to satisfy that emotional impulse i never really meant it now please hear me i don't want you to just rush out emotionally think and be very serious but like our father would do i'm going to count one to five i'm not saying you need impartation impartation will be later on but those who are saying sincerely i know i cannot even talk about shining forth because i failed in the first level of knowledge i do not know jesus i do not know the god of the bible i have heard about him i have gone to church i have read books about him but i do not have that encounter with him as i count one to five i like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand right in front here one when i count five i begin to pray two make sure you mean it with jesus three win that war tonight make it right with jesus he said ye must be born again shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead i will follow i have made a choice that i will listen for your hallelujah now please hear me please look up i'm about to pray for you but i need to tell you something you know there are many people who come out for altar calls like this and they don't really mean what they are saying they just come out because they feel like they should come out no it must be an experience when you come out it means that number one you have acknowledged the need for jesus in your life you have acknowledged that you cannot help yourself by the strength of the flesh number two when you come out it is that you are ready to surrender everything to him you're my treasure my priority who can compare with you for great is the measure of your your hands for all of you who are here and maybe there's someone who is watching by television you're watching by way of the television station or the internet maybe here in Nigeria maybe in America maybe in UK or you are even watching by way of a rebroadcast I want you to know that Jesus is able to give you a new beginning right now the Bible says whosoever comes to him he will in no wise cast away this is the God of the Bible all of you who are in front I want you to say this after me say it loud and clear you are not reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I need you in my life I believe that you are the son of God 
I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I am a recipient of eternal life. Amen. Congratulations to you. Now let me pray for you, Father. I thank you for these ones. You have brought them out by your spirit. According to the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I call them bona fide recipients of the life of God. According to the integrity of God's word and your declaration, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight and forever, you are for Jesus, you belong to him, and you will live for him forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, all of you, I want to, here's what I want you to do, please. You would, there are counselors waving the placard by my right, which is your left. I want all of you to decently just follow them. There will be a group of people who have a word with you. They may require details from you. Please do well to cooperate with them just within a minute or two, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's bless the Lord for them as they go. Is that the best you can do? Thank you, Jesus, for a massive harvest. Hallelujah. Now, for sake of time, let me speak over your life. We have another session, and um, let me encourage you to participate in all the sessions right up until your conference is over because every session has been designed by God to bless you and let me lend um, my voice to that of the organizers to encourage all those who are watching by way of television discipline yourself and participate in all of the sessions right till the last because every man woman of God who will be speaking here in in teaching of the word in worship or in whatever capacity it is designed to bless you and i know in the name of jesus christ that as you pay attention the lord himself will cause you to shine forth in jesus name lift your hands and receive the blessing for tonight in the name that is above all names i decree and declare standing upon the grace of our father and upon every the grace that is upon every servant of the Lord in this place, I decree and declare everything that has kept you down so that you will not shine forth. We clear it out of the way right now. We clear it out of the way right now. We clear it out of the way right now. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Every gift of God that is dormant within you and has not been released to bless your world, I decree and declare that between now and the end of this conference, may it find visibility to bless the world. In the mighty name of Jesus. I place a demand upon the grace that is on our father the grace that took him and lifted him and today is shining forth across the globe as it has worked for him may it work for me and work for you in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus 
I speak over someone's life by this time next year as you return here you will return ten times better ten times better ten times better in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me declare for tonight over you that as you go to sleep may God open the blueprint of your destiny for you visions of your future visions of God's program visions that reveal the blueprint of your place in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to shout hallelujah three times are you ready number one number two number three Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 